Thanks. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Watt, for, for coming today. Um, there's a couple of areas I'd like to cover um, on the, uh, with the committee. Um, first of all, just can I go back quickly? We had the HSE here recently in relation to the procurement for the original um, PPE uh, that, that had to be sourced. Can I just look, though, at the relationship between the department and the HSE and the supervision um, or what role the department had in supervising the procurement, if any, at that stage? Obviously, it was a difficult time and everything else, but I'd just like to get your an opportunity with you to, to hear from you about that. Yeah, so I, do, I don't I don't know. You weren't there. Uh, I wasn't there, so I was on the other side uh, in deeper. And I do recall, uh, Deputy, from from my perspective over there, the the uh, the, the engagement with with Paul Reed in the Department of Health uh, on on the procurement. Obviously, it was something that was done very quickly in difficult circumstances. Where we were trying to access um, uh, PPE, which was in short supply. Uh, and obviously, we needed to get it quickly to protect people. Uh, so the, procure, the procurement of that was was a challenge. Uh, from my perspective, and deeper, it was really to to try and ensure that we had proper sanctions and proper proper reporting, and that we were where possible complying. But I, I, I can't say exactly what what the role my predecessor Jim Bresnan played vis-à-vis uh, -vis the HSE. But I imagine that Jim and the finance team were involved with the HSE because the sums were so enormous and working through exactly how, how we'd go about that. Obviously, the HSE were taking the lead, but the department would have been, would have been supportive of, of what they were doing. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Um, and just at the moment, you know, obviously there's a significant concern about the, the third dose booster rollout and, and, and so on. I'm hearing from pharmacists just some confusion with the HSC today in relation to having ordered stocks and who they can give it to in that. From a departmental oversight perspective, how are you linking in with the efficiency with which that's being done, supervision of, of any wastage, the overall cost? Clearly the priority is to get the vaccinations to people as quickly as possible, but is this a sort of an ongoing management issue for you, an ongoing... Um, matter for supervision? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Deputy, yeah, it it's probably occupies uh, uh, most of our time the last uh, the last week, I'd say, and the weekend. Uh, myself and, and members of the management team uh, in the department spent uh, most of our time on the booster campaign uh, in terms of uh, looking at accelerating, whether moving, what implications would it mean for the health system if people were to move out into the vaccination centres, accessing staff from other parts of the public service, uh, uh, colleagues engaging uh, with the, the GPs and the pharmacies uh, in terms of what more could be could be done, how could we galvanise more, how can we get supplies, issues around the 15-minute waiver, which, which the CMO uh, uh, acted on yesterday with NIAC. So, yeah, a whole variety of, of issues the department is, uh, is embedded. There's a, there's a, a group uh, that, meets, that meets every Monday at 2 o'clock, uh, for myself and Paul Reid and the minister and other other colleagues are involved in in, uh, in this pretty much because it's uh, obviously given the concerns now about the new variant, it's a key part of our our response and our protection uh, is to ensure that we get as many boosters out there as possible. Okay. Well, then just just in, just in the interest of that, just just by way of a bit of feedback, pharmacists are telling me this morning that yesterday they were contacted by a new relationship manager in the HSE to do precisely that to, to get that out. And that, on foot of that, they were given advice um, that the uh, they would be able to vaccinate people over 18, uh, and then so ordered a lot more vaccinations. I'm thinking of one in Black Rock where it ordered an additional 800, obviously at cost, um, and then told later in the afternoon that no, it was restricted to over 50. So it's, I'm sure it's just a management issue. I'm sure it can be you know ironed out, but all of those things add up in terms of urgency, but also cost. Um, so it's really just a piece of feedback more than anything else. While while while, I, while I'm here with you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, again, we had the um, the NTMA in with us, and obviously part of that, the State Claims Agency. And one of the things that we're following up um, as a, a you know potentially as a committee, and I think the CNAG is around, as, and you mentioned it earlier, the clinical indemnity scheme. Um, what is the relationship then between the Department of Health and the State Claims Agency um, on payments by the State Claims Agency? And obviously, a lot of this is rooted in health and it is rooted in incident yeah. management supervision and so on. Can you talk us through that? So yeah, so the, the biggest the biggest element of the state claims agency re relates to, to to medical negligence, and a, a, a small subset again uh, accounts for the, the most significant the most significant costs. So we engage clearly when there's a uh, there's a there's a case. Uh, well, the, the state claims agency manage the day to day case, and so they they will decide the strategy and they will recommend. But when yeah. it comes to feedback, then in terms of what can we do to reduce the incidents, to reduce the case of negligence and harm. So it's about uh, patient safety, it's about incident management, uh, it's about uh, different ways that we respond. 
So uh, we set up, a, 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 there's a patient safety office been established. Uh, we have new protocols in relation to incidents. We have a new approach in terms of how we engage with, with, with people who, who, uh, who, 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 uh, who suffered from an incident that has taken place. So, so the, depart the department's uh, role really is to, is, to, is to get feedback from the state's claims agency in terms of their understanding of what's going on and then look at the policy response and look at can we, can we do things differently, can we do things to reduce the number of claims and manage the claims process in a more efficient way because the, the, the amount of claims is, is, is unsustainable for the state. The amount of money that we're paying out is absolutely incredible and it's gone up, it must have gone up over 100% the, uh, the last 10 years. So it's, 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 it's incredible. So I think, will, Mr. Watt, I think people would very much like if there were fewer injuries and fewer incidents. Absolutely, well, yeah. I suppose, rather than managing the efficiency of the claims process, which is, of course, important from the perspective of the state, I suppose my question is more, what is the department doing to target those areas where we're seeing repeated injuries, which are obviously very, uh, very, very injurious to the person for their life, but also very expensive for the state. You know, at what stage, you know, do you have ongoing conversations with hospitals? Do you have with, with the various with the various groups? You know, that's really what I'm interested in. Yeah, you know, we have we have that's what we've established the patient safety office. So that is that is is, is looking at uh, I guess clinical practice, clinical improvements, protocols that can be put in place. But I think absolutely that's the that's where the, we need to get better to reduce think, those example, those events that that's... that are causing harm to people. Yeah, that patient safety office, for example, is it managing, is it watching trends in hospitals? Is it watching trends with doctors? Is it watching trends with procedures? Yeah, it, it, it's doing all those things. So it's looking at, at, at clinical practice and clinical intervention, working with our colleagues in the HSE to see uh, what, what, issues, what issues are giving rise to these incidents which are leading to, to, to harm to people and what, what, what policies, uh, and while I'm not uh, an expert in this area, it, it comes down, I understand, to clinical governance and clinical management and protocols and practices and so on uh, at an at a, at a, at intervention level, at, at an acute level. Uh, and that's where, that's where a lot of work has, has gone in and a lot of further work. And that's need to be the, the absolute focus to ensure that we do everything we can to reduce the number of those, those events. And what is the process when the state claims agency, when a claim is made to them in terms of notifying the department? And are you always notified or are there cases where the state claims agency deals with the matter itself without any notification to you? Is that... Yeah, no, I think the department, we're, no, we're notified, Deputy, of the, of the claims and we're given trends and claims. So we, 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 we see the, the broad information about, about uh, the numbers of claims, the type of claims and so on. But we're not involved in the day-to-day management of it. That's what the state claims yeah. agency... You have two minutes left, Deputy. Right. Can I just ask you just about the, um, excuse me, just about Slauncha Care. I'm not sure if my colleagues have had the opportunity to touch on it yet. Can you just give me a sense of um, what stage of implementation are, are we at, please? Just quick update. Yeah. So, uh, so there's, there's there's progress made on uh, a number of different aspects. Obviously, enhancing the the capacity of the public system. Uh, a significant increase in staff uh, this year uh, and last year. The the, 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 two, the two years with the highest increase in staff in the public health system were, were this year and last year. What is that increase exactly? So, so it's about, about 5,500 for this year and over 6,000 last year, and there'll be a further increase next year. So that the, the largest increase is ever uh, in the health system. So we're talking we, about 12,000 extra, close to 12,000 extra yeah, over yeah, the last two years. Yeah, 12,000 last two years. Uh, 800 uh, increase in, in acute beds. So a very significant increase in, uh, in, in acute capacity, the largest that's increase. That's dispersed across the country? That, that's dispersed yeah. generally across the 800? Yeah, 800 additional, additional beds. Uh, very significant improvement in terms of the community health networks, establishment of the community health networks. I think we're due to establish 96, and I think we've got up to 35, 40. Uh, primary care centres, 40 primary care centres built since 2018 very significant recruitment into the into the community side. So I guess in terms of... of 40, new, 40 new primary care centres. Yeah, I think it's 38, 39, almost 40 since 2018 have been, have been, uh, have been built. So very significant uh, improvement in uh, <coughs> capacity of the system to, to treat people closer to home and in the community. Uh, increase in home, home hours, we touched upon this earlier, home health supports budgets increased by 100, 150 million. Uh, compared to last year, very significant increase in home support. So, in all the different aspects, increasing capacity, uh, in, in improving care to people uh, near near the community, uh, all those different elements. And, and we've touched on earlier about the regional health areas, which we're working on, and other aspects of it. So, like this, there's 
there's significant progress we had yesterday. We had the Slanter Care, the new uh, Slanter Care Board Implementation Board, the new structure we're setting up, where we looked at uh, plans in relation to waiting lists, uh, regional health authorities, enhanced community care, and the Slanter Care Integration Fund. So we looked at four the, the largest projects at our, at our, our, our meeting yesterday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Over time, Thank you.